Hello students how are you all this is anup sir your english teacher students in this video we are going to understand our lesson number 6 that is my childhood for class 9 from our beehive book so students before we begin with the lesson let me give you a small introduction about this lesson students abdul kalam's biography is titled wings of fire and the chapter my childhood talks about the childhood of apj abdul kalam he was the president of india and a great scientist too apj talks about his upbringing his parents and siblings he tells us about his friends and all those things that influenced his childhood so students Let's begin with the lesson. I was born into a middle class Tamil family in the island town of Rameshwaram in the Eastwild Madras state. Students, here the word Eastwild means former. So students, APJ Abdul Kalam was born into a middle class Tamil family and His place of birth Rameshwaram is an island town in the state of Tamil Nadu in the Bay of Bengal today we know this state as Tamil Nadu but when he was born at that time the state was known as Madras my father Jainul Abdin had neither much formal education nor much wealth Despite these disadvantages he possessed great innate wisdom a true generosity of spirit students here the word innate means inborn a quality of feeling in one's nature the word generosity of spirit means his soul sought to help others who were needy So students APJ Abdul Kalam's father's name was Jainul Abdin APJ says that his father was not very rich he did not have wealth he was not highly educated but despite these disadvantages he had some other qualities he was naturally very wise and was generous too he had an ideal helpmate in my mother ase amma so students apj's mother's name was ase amma she used to help his father she was a great support and help to apj's father i do not recall the exact number of people she fed every day but i am quite certain that far more outsiders ate with us then all the members of our family put together so students apj's mother was also generous and kind hearted every day she used to feed a lot of people she fed a great number of people from outside than the total number of members in her family i was one of many children a short boy with rather undistinguished looks born to tall and handsome parents students here the word undistinguished means ordinary or common so students abdul kalam had many siblings and he describes himself that he had short height and common looks he did not have any exceptional looks on the contrary his parents were very tall and handsome they were good looking but apj abdul kalam did not inherit their physical qualities we lived in our ancestral house which was built in the middle of the 19th century it was a fairly large pakka house made of limestone and brick on the mosque street in rameshwaram students here the word pakka house means a house 
made of bricks, cement and limestone, which is strong. So students, APJ Abdul Kalam lived in a very old house in which his ancestors lived. It was built in the 19th century. It was a pakka house which was made of bricks and limestone. It is located on the Moss Street in Rameshwaram. My austere father used to avoid all inessential comforts and luxuries. However, all necessities were provided for in terms of food, medicine or clothes. In fact, I would say mine was a very secure childhood, both materially and emotionally. Students, here the word austere means simple, strict and severe. The word secure means safe. The word material means in the terms of things like clothes, food and medicine. The word emotionally means in the terms of love and affection. So students, APJ Abdul Kalam's father was very simple, but he was strict also. He wanted to live his life in a simple way and he used to teach his children not to waste money on unnecessary things. APJ Abdul Kalam says that his father used to avoid any kind of inessential comforts and luxuries. He provided them all the necessary things like food, clothes and medicine. APJ Abdul Kalam says that his parents fulfilled all his needs whether it was any tangible thing or their love and affection. This shows that he has the quality of gratitude. APJ Abdul Kalam is thankful to his parents for whatever they did for him. The Second World War broke out in 1939 when I was 8 years old. So students, APJ Abdul Kalam was 8 years old when the Second World War was broke in the year 1939. So we can calculate that he was born in the year 1931. For reasons I have never been able to understand, a sudden demand for tamarind seeds erupted in the market. I used to collect the seeds and sell them to a provision shop on the Moss Street. A day's collection would fetch me the princely sum of one anna. Students, here the word tamarind seeds means it is a kind of fruit. The word princely sum means generous amount. Here it is ironic. The word Ana means an old Indian coin worth about 6 paise. So students, here APJ Abdul Kalam wants to say that the demand for tamarind seeds increased in the market. So APJ Abdul Kalam used to collect and sell the tamarind seeds to a provision store located on the Moss Street. He would earn a merely sum of 1 Ana which equals 6 paise. When he addressed it as a princely sum, something very great and valuable, he is being ironic as the amount was very less according to the future value. At that time, this one ana meant a lot of money to him. My brother-in-law Jalaluddin would tell me stories about the war which I would later attempt to trace in the headlines in Dinamani. Students, Dinamani is a Tamil daily newspaper. So students, APJ Abdul Kalam's brother-in-law, Jalaluddin, used to tell him the stories of ongoing world war. Later, APJ Abdul Kalam used to read the newspaper Dinamani and used to look for the news of the same stories. Our area, being isolated, was completely unaffected by the war. But soon, India was forced to join the aligned forces 
and something like a state of emergency was declared. Students, here the word isolated means lonely or cut off. Aligned forces are the armies of UK, USA and Russia during the Second World War. So students, Rameshwaram was a small island town far away from land. So it was not affected by the world war in the beginning. But after some time, India had to join the war and combined with the aligned forces of UK, USA and Russia. Then a state of emergency was declared in the country. During emergency, the president's rule is implemented in the country. It is like a curfew in the country. A lot of privileges which are given to the people are withdrawn. The first casualty came in the form of the suspension of the train halt at Rameshwaram station. The newspapers now had to be bundled and thrown out of the moving train on the Rameshwaram road between Rameshwaram and Dhanuskodi. Students, here the word casualty means loss. The word suspension means end. The word halt means stop. So students, the first impact of World War II on the people of Rameshwaram was the cancellation of the train stoppage at the Rameshwaram station. Earlier, the train which came from India used to stop at Rameshwaram station and then went further to Danuskori. But now the halt was cancelled and the train went from India to Danuskodi without stopping at Rameshwaram. With this, the newspaper bundles which used to come to Rameshwaram was thrown out of the moving train as it reached Rameshwaram road. That forced my cousin Samsuddin, who distributed newspapers in Rameshwaram, to look for a helping hand to catch the bundles and, as if naturally, I filled the slot. Samsuddin helped me earn my first wages. Students, here the phrase fill the slot means fit into a place easily. So students, APJ Abdul Kalam's cousin Samsuddin used to distribute the newspapers in Rameshwaram. As the train stoppage was cancelled and the newspaper bundles was thrown out of the moving train, he needed someone to help him catch it. APJ Abdul Kalam helped Samsuddin by catching the bundles and distributing the newspapers. In return, Samsuddin paid him a salary which was APJ's first earning. Half a century later, I can still feel the surge of pride in earning my own money for the first time. Students, here the word pride means sudden increase in the feeling of satisfaction derived from one's own achievements. Half a century later means after a period of 50 years. So students, this incident happened 50 years ago, even now, that is, when APJ wrote the book, he could feel satisfied and proud of himself by earning his first wages. Every child is born with some inherited characteristics into a specific socio-economic and emotional environment and trained in certain ways by figures of authority. I inherited honesty and self-discipline from my father. From my mother, I inherited faith in goodness and deep kindness and so did my three brothers and sisters. Students, here the phrase figures of authority means a person who had authority over another person. A person who has the power to give orders or make decisions. 
inherited means a characteristics or a quality which you have got from your parents or ancestors socio economic means in terms of money for a child the figure of authority is his parents and the next figure of authority can be his teacher a person who has authority over child apj abdul kalam says that whenever a child is born he has some qualities which is acquired from his elders in the family these depends upon the social status of a family and the environment at home from his father he inherited honesty and self discipline and from his mother he inherited faith and goodness and deep kindness his siblings also inherited these qualities from his parents i had three close friends in my childhood ramananda shastri arvindan and shiva prakashan all these boys were from orthodox hindu brahmin families students here orthodox means strict so students apj abdul kalam had three best friends during his childhood the names are ramananda shastri arvindan and shiva prakashan all of them belonged to very strict hindu brahmin families and were strict followers of their religion as children none of us ever felt any difference among ourselves because of our religious differences and upbringing in fact ramananda shastri was the son of pakshi lakshmana shastri the high priest of the rameshwaram temple later he took over the priesthood of the rameshwaram temple from his father arvindan went into the business of arranging transport for visiting pilgrims and shiva prakashan became a catering contractor for the southern railways so students as apj was born from a muslim family he says that during his childhood all the children were so close to each other that they never felt they belonged to different religions religion was not a barrier in their relationship there is a very famous temple in rameshwaram the rameshwaram temple apj's best friend ramananda shastri was the son of pakshi lakshmana shastri the priest of this temple when these three friends grew up ramananda shastri took the priesthood of the rameshwaram temple arvindan started a business of transporting the pilgrims to and from the rameshwaram temple and shiva prakashan became a catering contractor for the southern railway he was in charge of the catering for the railways during the annual sri sita rama kalyanam ceremony our family used to arrange boats with a special platform for carrying idols of the lord from the temple to the marriage site situated in the middle of the pond called rama tirtha which was near our house students rama kalyanam ceremony is known as kalyanotsava it means marriage festival in south india marriage is known as kalyanam so lord rama and sita's marriage is called sita rama kalyanam ceremony it is the ceremony of depiction of the marriage between sita and rama so students whenever the sri sita rama kalyanam ceremony used to take place apj's family also took part in it they used to arrange the boats for it they used to make a special platform on the boats on which the statue of rama and sita were placed 
and transported from the temple to the marriage site which was in the middle of a pond named Rama Tirtha. This pond was near APJ's house. When he was growing up, he never thought that there was any difference between Hindus and Muslims as they participated in the Hindu festivals wholeheartedly. Events from the Ramayana and from the life of the Prophet were the bedtime stories my mother and grandmother would tell the children in our family. So students, APJ Abdul Kalam says that they listened to the stories from the Ramayana and the life of the Prophet from their mother and grandmother as the bedtime stories. So they listened to the stories of both Hindu gods and Muslim gods. There was no discrimination on the grounds of religion. So students, this is all about this video. We will continue this lesson in the next video. And in the next lecture, I will help you out with the notes of this lesson. Till then, this is Anupsa saying thank you and goodbye.